I've never done mushrooms or acid, but that whole season with Case Keenum felt like that. That was nice. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for episode 11 of the podcast. We are uh, out on the deck again tonight. It's beautiful. 70 some degrees. We got a volleyball tournament this weekend for uh, Shriners Children's Hospital uh, fundraiser that Matt's wife puts on every year. And we were rained out last year, weren't we? Not rained out. We I thought played we played in the rain like three years, I'm pretty sure. Didn't it one year we just got dumped on? The, we the still very played. End. The very yeah. end. Of oh, history. okay. We, had, we played all the way through, I think, all of the ones I've been at, at least. And that's been at least the last three years, four years. Yeah. I think I've been at the last three. And as I think well. it's rained three of those four years on us. But Danielle's in our pool. Did you see that? I did. And we play him the very last game. The very last. They're game, not going to so remember easy win. that. They're not going to remember that game. <laughs> yeah. They are going to be two sheets to the wind. <laughs> so hammered. <laughs> oh man! All right, guys, let's get into it. We're going to talk a little Colorado football with our "Let's Talk About It" um, segment, and then going to hand it over to Matt. Going to give a little uh, input on Wojo retiring. That's some big news that came out, what, in the last week? Mm-hmm. And then we're going to hop into a little Washington Commanders football corner <laughs> with Mr. Peterson. I've been uh, grinding over the tape the last, I, I would say, like four or five hours in between patients, just absolutely getting into what McDaniels is doing out there. Ooh, you're going to have that Cliff Kingsbury offense down. Man, yeah, it's all shotgun. Was the only tape they allowed to show is the one from yesterday. It's <laughs> literally – okay, so I'm going to need your guys' help because I did not analyze yesterday's game. Oh, you I missed just, that on the only good I know. Stuff, I, yeah. I saw the stats. I saw the line. I saw some stuff. But we're going to talk about week one and week two, and then we can touch on week three. Um, and then we'll go from there. Cool. We got a little Matt's team from hell. We got some candidates yeah. for the NFL season, and maybe maybe a little Vikings talk, unless Trevor's too afraid to talk about him. We'll see. It could be. He might be. He doesn't we'll want to jinx him. Matt's team's from hell, but that's this this football season's Is wild. Teams from or in? <laughs> from hell. They're having the season from hell. Yeah. Mm, okay. I'll, expo- oh, I'll explain okay, the okay. concept yeah. a little bit later. Colorado football. I, you feel like you just got the old man take of the year. Just, I do have the old man take of the year. Oh, just like, with Colorado football? Ready to Ready to scream. They're, <clears throat> they should have lost to NDSU. They should have lost to NDSU. Man, I was pulling for NDSU so hard. To be that kind of program and have that much like hype around it and the people that they bring in, why aren't, why aren't they beating people by what they claim to be beating people by? They can barely handle NDSU. Well, I hey think now, a lot of people can barely <laughs> handle NDSU. Okay, Trevor, sorry, but that uh, pack, <laughs> uh, where were they at? Pac-12? The, uh, no, Colorado. Colorado? They're, they're in the Big 12. Yeah, I think they're in Big 12. Colorado's state. in the Big 12. The conference thing is crazy. That's, it is. That's a whole other That thing. is wild. Yeah. Colorado's in the Big 12. NDSU is an amazing program in the division they're in. Don't get me wrong. I will 100% back you on that. I don't think NDSU should be able to hang as well as they did against Colorado. But they then, definitely then we should can... be able to, but I'm just saying historically they have done this against a lot of teams I know. that they're not supposed to be doing. They beat Iowa. Yep. They beat... They beat Minnesota. They beat Minnesota. That's not an accomplishment. I'm not... Sorry. They... But strike, I mean, strike that for, one from the record, please. I'm not saying it's a great accomplishment. I'm just saying they weren't meant to go there yeah. and win. That's not why they paid them to play there. <laughs> you're you're, talk, you're, you're talking mad shit about his alma mater right now. I know. Well, no, I'm, I'm backing him up. They're a really okay. good football team. He's getting upset. Trey Lance is not working out. Carson Wentz is a ghost. Like you gotta stick. be nice to him. Easton Stick. Is... Easton Stick might be starting this summer. Yeah. So. <laughs> For who? The Charger. Easton Stick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the worst heard about one that of the name. three, probably. So, so be, but, be uh, respectful. Be respectful. Hopefully, he's better than I remember him being. But anyways, enough NDSU I just, football. Talk. I just What's don't understand. On? I don't understand. One, the portal's crazy, but it should show that when you get half of your team to leave your program, and then you have to bring in seventy some new kids. It's going to be the same thing next year, and it's going to be the same thing after that. And I've heard the argument is, well, they're going to go there, they're going to get recognition, they're going to go somewhere and to a bigger program. Because really, Colorado is a bottom-of-the-barrel Big 12 team. They're not that good. They have two players. They have one player. They have Hunter. They have Prime's kid, who's a quarterback. That yeah, the, they, the, they the claim... quarterback, not the defender. Shadur Sanders is the one who is... 
really good. The other one yeah. who got hurt is not going to amount to anything. Yeah, the quarterback, the, th- yeah. the guy who's Shitter. slinging yeah. the ball. But Hunter was, or I mean, Hunter has nothing to do with the two kids we're talking about. But like, yeah. <laughs> Hunter's a stud. He is amazing. Hunter, Hunter's a stud. He's gonna, he's gonna do some stuff in the NFL, I think. But man, there's so I, I just don't, I don't get the hype. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't think it's there. They're gonna win. What, what's their record right now? Three and one. They just beat Baylor, didn't they? Yeah. Yes. They, in yeah. overtime. Yes. Because Travis Hunter really put the team on his back yeah. in, in the end it's, and overtime. That's the only and, time they win. Yeah. He was hurt yeah. last year, right? Because he did that against NDSU. Travis was, Hunter was hurt for a little bit because I think he yeah. messed up his hamstring or something. But I guarantee still without him, the they lose to NDSU. Yeah. He had two amazing catches that basically sealed the game. Yeah. Well, I think it's all show. Well, that, well obviously. I mean, this is all Dion's creation. Yeah. But what you're saying about how, like, the portal and everything like that, is this not just going to end when Shadur goes to the draft? Like, this and Travis Hunter go to the draft. Like, he's not going to be able to continue this. Like He's going to try. He's going to get run out of town. <laughs> like, it, like, it's not gonna, like, it's not going to work. I don't know. I think he's going to get worse. Because yeah, just, he's going to be like, oh, look what I did with those two. Because they're well, going to get drafted. That's how the recognition looks. Right. Yeah, because then you get more people yeah. eyeing that school. And then you might actually get high talent if a bunch of them agree, we want to go there and... I, I also, how much money now with money being the big deal? Like you can pay your athletes. Like, what are they dishing out to get there? He claims athletes. he's not about that though. He's yeah. like, I'm not gonna. He claims that, he, and then when he has a bad year, <laughs> that money yeah. comes out. And I would agree, <laughs> but he claims that he's recruiting people to play football. And if you come into the office and you talk money, you're not playing here. Which I do respect that. Like they're college kids, get paid what you want to get paid, but like go play football. But it, cool. but his son is in a KFC commercial with him. Oh, I know. So like, <laughs> so like that's that, that's fine and all for the double talk of yeah. it all. But again, like nil money concerned, like his his kids are taking it, and Travis Hunter is taking it. Yeah. Like they're the ones that are absorbing all of the money that is probably there. Plus Dion's so contract is outside of nil. When they leave, no. now that money frees right. up. And but you but put this it to is the other this is my point. I I do think that it's good for college football. Mm-hmm. Because he is being able to add a different dimension, add a different layer. Yeah. Like, who would be paying attention to Colorado football without Dion being there? No one. Is it distracting? Absolutely. But outside of that, like, there really aren't that many characters or spokesmen or, like, hype, hype people really in the college game right now. And I like that. I don't mind the showy stuff. Are you talking Whatever. coaches? Yes. Yeah, you're right. There's no Saban's gone. Yeah. Urban Myers isn't there, and like he's been gone for a while. There's, All those big Lane Kiffin's still there, <laughs> but well, you don't hear about anything. Yeah, from but him. he's he's rotten away in Ole Miss with a girlfriend that's half of his age. So hey, like, they're number six right now in the nation. Okay, well, actually, no, Tennessee is. Sorry, so continue. I think that there's an aspect of this where it's good, and maybe because of the profile that he is bringing, can actually elevate a lot of other people that are around. Yeah. Now, the problem is he's not elevating anybody else right now. Mm -hmm. He's only elevating his kids and Travis Hunter. And again, Shadur is probably going to go top five. Travis Hunter is probably going to go top five. And he might be number two or number one next year in the draft. Yeah, Hunter's a beast. But Sanders' other kid, who I don't even know his name, who got hurt this year. This is like Shiloh or something. Shiloh. He's not going to get drafted. No. He's not going to do anything. Like... He's not a good defender. The whole joke about him is that he likes to hit people when they're out of bounds. <laughs> really? Like, that's that's the whole hype about him. I didn't see that. So once they are gone, there is no one for Dion to latch on to. Dion's yeah. not going to get an NFL job. Like, he's not going to get a coaching job, front office job, anything like that. They're not going to tolerate that. Like, they're not going to bring him in and be like, oh, yeah, look at what you did for these programs. You really, yeah. really built them up. But knowing him, he'll play it off like, oh, I don't want it. I don't want an NFL job. Right, so he's just destined to go back to commentating. Yeah, which that's fine. Was he commentating before this? Yeah, for like NFL Network and whatever. Uh, he I always didn't... he always just kind of seemed to be around. I didn't know that. But he, the visibility that he can bring to Colorado is like remarkable. Yeah. It really is. He's just doing it in the w- only way that Deion Sanders knows how to do it. Yeah, which makes a lot of people angry. Which I don't know. At the end of the day, is it is it is it so bad? Like that, there's a program that would never get any kind of consideration as being propped up. 
is it the most annoying storyline in all of college football? Absolutely. I think I think that's what it is. It's annoying. It's like, oh, Colorado's playing this week again. They're playing a subpar. I don't know who they're playing. It's just in general. Yeah. They're playing a subpar team. Yeah. That it's going to be a toss up, fifty fifty, if they win or lose. But then they play Oregon and they lose by fifty. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> well, that's the problem. <laughs> but but that's the problem is they talk at a level of they should be in playoff consideration. But then they actually play somebody that is even ranked top yeah. 25, and they just get smacked. Who probably won't even be in playoff consideration right? in the top 25 area. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's, it's a bit much. But. But, this, but this is like a serious old man corner for like, yeah. for like a lot of people that are like up in arms like about the way Dion is conducting himself and like the way that the whole team is. And it's like... That has always been his M.O. Yeah. It I guess I didn't know about him until he showed up at Colorado. Because, again, I never really followed the football NFL stuff. Hall of Famer and Major League Baseball player, Deion yeah. Sanders. Yeah, honestly, I've never, I've never knew – I knew of him. I never followed him, never Prime really time? watched – Yeah. Ne- I could care less when I was younger. Mm. Never watched a game, never did any of that stuff. Mm. Well, to be fair, when, when he was at the end, he was playing for, like, that 2000s Ravens team. Yeah. Like, that was the end, the end. Oh, okay. So, like, as far as, like, collective, like... Because he was on the Falcons, right? Falcons, Niners, 49ers, yeah. Cowboys. Like, there was, there was a lot of jumping, but, like, like he wasn't really in our consciousness yeah. for our yeah. age of people. But, like, for, I mean, our parents, mm-hmm. you know, our dads and stuff, like, he was a pretty massive deal at Florida State and everything like that, too. He's a good athlete. Hey, I'll you still can't that. get by without hearing stats and stuff about him, like, at some point. Maybe like. since Florida State is in a complete uh, tailspin as a program after all of the whining and crying <laughs> that they did last year, going undefeated and not getting playoff consideration, and now seemingly uh, they have not won a game this year, right? Nope. They are. Well, they might have won last week. I don't know. Okay. Well, They, they were 0-3 going into the last week. They played the school week. of the blind and deaf, whatever. Yeah. Like, maybe he can just hop to FSU after this. Yeah. Who knows? No. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. This Again, this is probably, like, a very, like, fast thing that will just fizzle out very quickly. And then he'll all of a sudden be on ESPN College Game Day shouting with Pat McAfee. And then everyone will be like, oh, yeah, that's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> Don't I, I have no interest in getting into Pat McAfee tonight. Man, if they break up that game day crew right now, it's so good. You got McAfee, which is nuts, which I'm I like, but I'm indifferent about Saban, who's just the like schoolboy who's just straight up. Saban looks like, like the, Satan there. I get Does that he? it's a big yeah. accomplishment, but I love that every time he's on the TV, seven time champion. <laughs> Yeah, oh, every it's time. Not, it doesn't just say who he is. It's always seven times. That must champion. that must have been in his contract. To say yeah, that whenever there's yeah. whenever there's a cry on that comes up beneath my beneath my image, you need to put seven time champion. It out. says it every time. Just make sure people remember. If you add Dion to like Kirk Herb Street and and Pat McAfee and Nick Saban, <laughs> you have no like what would happen. It like works. Dion and McAfee would probably kill each other. You think McAfee talks a lot? That man, Dion, would just. Yeah. He would, oh, yeah, back in Colorado, we played them, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And nothing nothing screams super cool like a old old cornerback who is mostly famous for running back punts and a, a punter to really go at it on yeah. college game day because those are the people you always want to hear about. Yeah, I'm just an old man, Matt. Some of this new stuff they're doing in the college oh, yeah. so coaching is, world and the NIL what, yeah, world. Yeah. and uh, Shut down the transfer portal. <laughs> They're a bunch of bitches if they transfer because they're not playing. I do like that Taylor makes the claim he's old, doesn't know Deion Sanders, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> stuff. And I'm not so editing it's... that out. Look at Archie Manning. Is that his name? The dude on Texas? Oh, yeah. Sat in his place. He's doing his thing. Back up. Back up. Back up. Is he a junior yeah, right do now? Do you think that man has to chase any money? That's what I was thinking. About. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's going to have a problem with money. That that man's probably sitting on three million dollars in nil money, just oh, waiting for oh, Quinn more than that. I think for, it's uh, like Quinn Ewers to leave. I think it's more than that. I think he's like third, the the starting quarterback, and then um, that Livy Dunn chick is still up there because she came back, and then I think Archie Manning's third so, on the nil. So list. you're telling me. Archie Manning gets to be a backup quarterback. Yeah, he's doing gets, it the right way. Gets to go to the University of Texas. Yep. Uh, will 
no doubt be drafted top yeah. three, regardless of his play style. He looked good. All. He looked good last week. Okay, and you think you think he, that's like doing it the right way? Yeah, he's learning. <laughs> he's taking the notes. He's he's oh, a backup. He's taking the notes. He's learning. Yeah, I'm sure he's learning a lot in his ridiculous classes that are made up for him. I'm not saying classes. He doesn't go to school. No, I'm saying I'm right. saying the football classroom. How could they? Football classroom. How could they? Yeah, they're not allowed to go to school. All in all, this Colorado thing will fizzle out. It will go away. Okay. I hope you're right. They're going to stink. They're not going to even make a bowl game. Like, If they win six games, they will. I said they're only going to win four, and they need one more to do that. So, Well, how many more really bad teams do they have to play? I don't know. I haven't looked at I their schedule. Got a few left. Like, at least like three. Everyone lot. in the Pac-12 left to go to the Big Ten. Yeah. Which Oregon. Is- now the Big 20. Big 20, yeah. They're co- yeah. They stretch coast to coast, which is nuts. Yeah, because Rutgers and Oregon should be in the same conference. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> New, New Jersey, a, a New Jersey school and an Oregon school yep. should really be playing each other. Yep. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's else, very efficient. Who else? Where did UCLA come from? Was it the Pac-12? Yeah. USC? Yeah. Pac-12? Yes. Huh. Because you know that great USC, Iowa... What is that sound? <laughs> I think that's Mayo One. They come over here often. Either way, I like the Colorado thing. It's I, gonna I, fizzle out. I know. Yeah. I know you're on your porch right now. You've got your sun tea. You're in your rocker. Yep. You're shaking your fist at the clouds, <laughs> saying you used to look different. Yep. Why do you look that way now? Yep. But the clouds will return, Taylor. You have me down to a T. Exactly. Exactly. Man. You would be a hit on Facebook with this opinion, though, if you ever want to just float it out there. I should. Back in my day, Colorado used to not be so mouthy. Gosh. <laughs> it's a great place to go, though. Colorado is awesome. Beautiful boulder. Are you kidding me? It is beautiful. Gorgeous. Gorgeous How are you place. teaching your kid the ABCs? You got to explain this. <laughs> yeah, to I me. don't I have a clue. You haven't looked at it? There's so a, a new way? Yeah, there's a new way to teach kids the ABCs, and schools are starting to do this. Now, this is coming from TikTok, which I then get from Facebook, which then I get from Instagram because it's a reel on Instagram because I, I don't have a TikTok. Why it- had to change like. tiktok is tiktok is owned by china i don't get into that stuff <laughs> <laughs> come on come not, on not, say it not a sponsor but they could be <laughs> hey tiktok wants to throw money our way <laughs> no i meant china oh yeah oh, okay. if china wanted to sponsor <laughs> yeah. the podcast yeah. we we do welcome them wow All i right. wonder what you have to say on the podcast to be sponsored by them. <laughs> outstanding food thank you <laughs> they do a good food so the way we learned was A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? I think. I that's think that's how it is. Okay. What they're saying now is they're slowing it down because they don't want kids rushing through L, M, N, O, P. You wrap them. They don't nope. want them to. <laughs> so it's A, B, C, D, E, F. I'm probably going to mess this up because I just looked it up again because I haven't looked it up in a while. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X. Nope, I messed it up. I got to think about it. It's because you lost your rhythm because it screws it up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're supposed to there's say no L, rhythm. It'll be like there's no, all one letter. <laughs> nope. Well, that's what they're trying to get away L, from. L, M, N, O, P. So A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. Something along those lines. Do they say anything after? That's the only difference. They just slow. It I down. can't remember what they said. They just slow it down because they don't want kids rushing through elemental P. I mean, it makes sense, I guess. Like what, for speech. What part of yourself. it makes sense? What do you mean? What part of it makes sense? You said it makes sense. Why does that make sense? I was just about to say that. <laughs> would inform us. I don't well, think what it I was going to say is that I'm dying here. When a kid is at a like, younger age, like if you teach them to say like elemental P like that, then you're like, I feel like you could be also teaching them during their words. You don't have to like pronounce part of the words. Like you don't have to pronounce out the letters or anything. You just kind of blend it all. Yeah. You speak fast and mumble. Yeah. Which I get accused of doing all the time. Same here. So maybe yeah. they're fixing it. <laughs> they might be. You're the dad. I'm not. Yeah, you have the kid. Out your stuff, dude. So maybe they're going to go back to the old way in about <laughs> Matt's going to have to five learn years. Whenever. Too. When do you put kids in preschool these days? I don't even know. How do you even do the? I don't remember how the new math works either. Where you do like a cross. Oh, and, you and, you do the lines. Yeah. Yeah, and then you count the dots. So if it's like uh, thirty-three times something, you do like three. 
three. Yeah. You can't and then do you put... simple remainders carried over and no. put the one on top. Anymore. They don't know that stuff. <laughs> do you think we might be a little out of our depth here? Probably, but yeah. I was just curious because you're the dad. I'm going Old Testament ABCs. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. That's all I wanted to hear. Elemental B. Elemental B. That's what he will say. Perfect. Well, I just want to make sure. And if he so tries what, anything yeah, what differently, gonna, <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to put peanut butter on the roof of his mouth, then he'll have to go elemental Then he'll B. have to say it really slowly. Elemental B. <laughs> just making sure, because I don't want to lead your kid down the wrong direction if I'm just jamming out to the ABCs with them, yeah. and I'm singing <laughs> you know, it the wrong way. daily things, daily things. Naturally. Does. Yes. Yes. <laughs> If you ever get around Taylor, he will hit some ABCs with you. Actually, so the you only forget. part of the alphabet we're going to teach him is element of P. El- element of P. He'll <laughs> the never rest lose, of it, you know no, other letters. He'll never learn any of the other ones. <laughs> yeah, there's only five letters in the alphabet. Element of P. Okay. Wojo. Woj. The, the NBA guru is retiring. Yes, Adrian Wojnarowski. Fill us in. Fun name to say, impossible name to spell. He... Uh, very shockingly, he he announced that he was retiring last week from ESPN. The Woj Bomb is what I've relied on for the last, like, 10 years of my life for all NBA news. I mean, True. he's been doing it for three decades, but, I mean, he was like a beat reporter and then, you know, kind of elevated. I think it wasn't until he got to Yahoo where it really, he became like the insider guy. And then ESPN, he obviously got an absolute boatload of money to go there yeah. um, after Yahoo. Um but it's just cra- it's crazy that he gave it up. But at the same time, like I f- like completely understand. This is got this is a guy who's like I think his last tweet was about Isaac Okoro signing like a four year deal with the Cavaliers in the middle of the night. That to me would have been a breaking point for me to be like, why am I yeah, doing this? I think I gotta get out of this. Do it's, you think that was he needed to do that for his contract? Like, do you think it's in there? Like, he needed to report on everything. He had to be first, man. Uh, yeah, he's he's right. he's Continue. battling he's battling shams all the time. Yeah, shams who I mean, good for him. That dude is in a contract here with Stadium. It, people did not anticipate going this far into contract deals, but here Who's we are. Sham? Shams Charnia. He's he's kind of like the other breaking news type okay. guy. He's like he's like always doing battle with Adrian Wojnarowski. Gotcha. But now Shams is in a contract year. And he has not signed a stadium, and now he's probably like, "Hey, ESPN, he's going to be the ESPN guy. Why don't you give me the Adrian deal, which was like thirty million bucks? It was Gee. a lot of money for him to go to ESPN. He was getting paid money. But it's 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 just kind of crazy because it's just like a, a the changing of the guard for like a lot of these old media people that I really like. I love following, and especially when I was in journalism school, like it was people that I was reading all the time. Like Jackie McMullen retired a couple years ago. Um, Al Michaels is still clinging on to hope for whatever God knows reason at Amazon. Like, but like all these people I grew up like really, really loving. Chris Berman came back, which God, he's awful. Like he really needed <laughs> back, to hang back, it up. Back, 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 gone. I only remember him from Homer and Derby's. You, you never watched like primetime with him? The ESPN? Way, movie? way long yeah. ago. Yeah. But it's like, it's just kind of crazy to see somebody who like maybe worked a hundred hours a week. Every like every single week of every Man. single year for like the entire time he was at Yahoo and ESPN, just be like, I'm just gonna go to my college, my old, my alma mater. I'm gonna be the Which general is where man, again? Uh, St. Bonaventure okay. in New York. And then I'm going to be the general manager of the men's basketball team, which I have never heard in my life. Is no. that a water boy? <laughs> like, is that a, is that a ball boy? Well, managers are okay. Ball boys and water boys. But I guess if you're general, general manager, manager, maybe you focus on filling up the water bottles. Maybe, and then you don't have to pass them out. Whatever filling it is, filling up those kids' uh, paychecks. <laughs> Whatever it is, but like, I think it's funny. Like, what is he gonna do? What hobbies is he gonna be? Like, is he gonna take up pottery? He's not gonna know what to do with his life. Oh, maybe he's just gonna like. Why would you go to New York? You can't even golf all year round there. He lives in New York. Oh, he does. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. He's, he's a New York guy. I didn't know that. He probably doesn't even have to f- set foot on that campus. Probably not. He can probably just hang out in, in New York City for all of his life, Man. for the remainder of his days. It's just kind of amazing. Like, all of these all of these people just, like, leaving all of a sudden. I know this is not relevant for what? most people. But what so. are you, how are you going to react when Scheffler's gone? I'm going to be happy. You're not a Scheffler guy? I'm not. He's, he's very, like... Because it's he, him and who's the other big, uh, like, first report NFL Rap, guy? Rappaport. Rappaport, for yeah. For NFL Network. 
both Rappaport and Schefter are like um, copy paste guys. So okay. they get they get the text or the email from the agent, and then they just plug it in there and then send it Man. without ever, ever double checking. You can tell when you look at the <laughs> tweets. When you look at the te- tweets, Trevor. Okay, you can tell. Are you, you can on, tell. Are you on Twitter? Did you hear him almost screw up the word? He should have fixed his element of he's. <laughs> mm, I almost lost it there. You're right. <laughs> he's speaking too quick. Yep. Are you on Twitter though? No. You're missing out. That's how I missed all of MySpace. Them, I MySpace? Yeah. I maybe made one right when it died. Ah. <laughs> I had one of those. Me too. Oh, MySpace. What I wish I remember my top five songs. And then oh, if you I like move, never got to if you move out people out of your top five friends, like those friends get all pissy. Oh, it was mm-hmm. great. Yeah. I know I built one, but I don't think I ever used it. Yeah, Tom was cool. Anyways, it's just kind of it's just kind of wild to see him walk away like that and quite honestly i hope i can do that in my career someday that'd be sweet just be like you know what i'm just gonna fill up water bottles for my alma mater i'm good that instagram post was i think there was more to it than just like a retirement i don't know if we're like, not getting into we're not getting a conspiracy mode. we don't need to and i'm not going to but like i want to know they, those guys are working their asses off at espn like there's a lot that they have to do sun up sun down man like as the ceo of espn or the owners or whoever runs that or like they are they pushing them out or are they just looking to make because i know espn's been making a lot of cuts recently and i don't really i don't need to get into all that stuff but it is wild how much change is going on within that program that i grew up watching sports center all that stuff well you know what charles barkley says about espn i don't because i i enter charles no i'm more of a shaquille o'neal guy mm, that's too bad <laughs> charles barkley a long time ago he's talking about Stephen a smith oh boy and yeah, um, that's exactly my thoughts and talking about talking about Stephen a smith and like his big deal and he was like you're not gonna like for espn you're not gonna pay me like shit and work me like a dog because that's what they do at ESPN, apparently. Charles said that? Yes. Okay. You're going to pay me like shit and work me like a dog. Mm-hmm. But right now for TNT, like he's got it, he's got it made. Yeah. Oh, Charles? Two, three days a week? Yeah. 30, that's all you got to do. 30 million a year? He, he's he, making he a lot of money. He flies back between Atlanta and Philly and, and uh, Phoenix, all yeah. of his places, all the time. He's good to go, man. Those he's TNT go. those TNT guys are doing it right. Rest in peace. Plus, they're like the only thing on TNT. Hey, we get them for one more year. Rest in peace. One more year. Hmm. And then something magical is going to happen. They're going to start something together. I doubt it. I doubt it, too. I doubt it. My sweet boys. <laughs> My sweet, sweet boys. Matt's so anyways. Gonna, Matt's going to be watching only post-game, only pre-game, and only post-game. All NBA season. He's not going to watch any games. He's just going to watch <laughs> those guys. Uh, yeah, after next year's season, the season's... He's going to old seasons of basketball, I, rewatching all those years. Oh, I miss my boys. Oh, I miss Kenny running to the stage. Shaq falling. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's just it's just gonna be strange. It's gonna be strange, like to see people try to fill that gap and like Stephen A. Smith is another one where like I can't believe it because he he's like he's doing first take from like five a.m. and then he's got so many other things going on. Yeah. And like, I just don't understand how you. So it makes sense why he's demanding that much money. At the beginning of the whole Stephen A. Smith thing, before you brought that up, Matt, I was like, this this dude is just he, he's on TV to yell. Like that's all he's doing. But you're right, he does fill in a lot and he's doing a bunch of stuff. And so I don't he know. successfully yells and brings in a lot of views. Yeah, I also don't like first take. I'm not a first take fan because they do get into like more arguments, and I'm just like. Yeah, I don't need arguments. I just give me some give me some good content. It's very entertaining that Shannon Sharp's on it now. I will say that <laughs> I have not watched it <laughs> since. Are you a Shannon Sharp fan over there? <laughs> just just recently, I'm a fan of his work. <laughs> From where where do you start <laughs> jumping into that? You watch <laughs> one of his pod- you watch They're one of his four anymore. hour podcast on you're, you're, YouTube, and then all of a sudden you're like, hey, skip, skip, <laughs> skip, <laughs> oh skip. <laughs> Okay, why don't you go into your, your commies? <laughs> they're not commies. The Washington Commanders, the commies? Yeah. No, yeah. they're not the commies. Hit us. The Washington Commanders. I think you almost changed it there. Could be <laughs> one of the most exciting slash worst teams in the NFL. So before you like launch into this diatribe about yeah. what do you want to know? the commanders of all teams, what... What compelled you <laughs> to choose this team to follow for the entirety of a season to analyze? Yep, I will be following them for the entirety of this season. I did not watch week three against Cincinnati, which I probably should have because that was their best game. 
Jaden Daniels intrigues me. Dude's got an absolute missile of an arm, and he can run extremely well. They don't have much talent around him, though. You really <laughs> this is what did I miss found out then, because he did both of those things. <laughs> yeah, I know. He did very well. So, for the Washington Commanders, they are what? Two and one? Yes. They lost to Tampa Bay. They beat the Giants without scoring a touchdown. Yep. That kicker went seven for seven. Mm-hmm. Just choop, 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 choop. straight then, off, straight off the couch too. Really? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't see that. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Just he showed was, up. He, the their kicker got hurt. In wow. Week one and he got signed for week two. Impressive. Nice. And he's probably going to get signed for the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, I think his contract is fully guaranteed. And then um, last night beat Cincinnati, but who knows what Cincinnati's doing right now. Losing games. They're they don't they <laughs> yeah. don't look good. So Jaden Daniels rushing through the first two weeks. Uh rushing yards. hundred and thirty two rushing yards. That's so many for a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Just it's probably more than until yesterday that would have been more than <laughs> what did he have yards. yesterday? Uh yesterday did he run had like six 50, 60? So through the first three weeks, his rushes have been going down, and I got some thoughts on why they're going down. That first game, I think it was just like he wasn't going through all his reads. He wasn't taking the time to look at stuff. But I was watching film, and that line is not good. They don't give him time at all. And he sits back in the shotgun. They run a shotgun offense, hike, ball. He goes through like two looks. Those defenders are on him, and then he takes off. So first game, it was... He had 40 yards. He had 40 yards last night? Yeah. Um, 16 rushes, 88 yards, 5.5 yards per rush, and two rushing TDs week one. It's a lot of rushes for a quarterback, getting hit that many times. Which is my concern with his well-being since he is weighing But that's been a like common thing for rookies. Yes. Yeah. A lot of rookies are running until you get injured and then when you return from your injury is when you learn how to sit in the pocket do you think yes. they're running because they because can't that's what they go did through in college <laughs> well i don't know they, he didn't do that in college he was slinging it at lsu sure but he also ran a lot more than the nfl's gonna want him to yeah but the game's so different from college to nfl yeah. but yeah I, I i agree with you on that but he runs a college offense he does run a college offense that's a cliff kingsbury <laughs> offense who's that the offensive coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. As we progress through the weeks of me analyzing and getting into the tape in the trenches of the Washington Commanders, it will get better. Can I give you some background on Kingsbury? Yeah, give me. Since it appears you are not aware of his presence. Nope, because all I looked at was Jaden Daniels and the surrounding people around him. Gotcha. Uh, number one, Ryan Gosling lookalike in a, any kind of contest. Handsome, handsome man. Okay. I can uh, get behind that. Was Patrick Mahomes' coach at Texas Tech. That makes sense. And uh, that's where, obviously, that style comes from because Patrick Mahomes was throwing it like 60 times a game. And yep. Obviously, he, he has earned that right to do that. He got hired for Arizona because he was going to be the Kyler Murray whisperer. Mm-hmm. Um, completely crapped the bed there. Yep. Bounced around a little bit. Was at USC last year with Caleb Williams. Didn't know that. And now he's in Washington as their offensive coordinator because he's trying to make a bid back to being the head coach. But basically... That is a wild ride. His whole MO is, I am going to make your your quarterback a superstar because it worked one time with Patrick Mahomes. So he thinks he can just do it over and over again? Yes. Yeah, there's not many more Patrick Mahomes that are becoming that are going to so come about. Say, there's the better question. Did he make anyone a superstar? Did he just have the right person? He had the right. I mean, Caleb Williams was pr- pretty. Caleb good, Williams was you know. good in uh, college. Yeah, like he was pretty yeah. good, but not as good last year. Yeah, but that was more of the surrounding cast for Caleb Williams than anything else. Anyways, Jaden, this is this is why I kind of worry about Jaden Daniels in that offense. Now, Eric Bieniemy was their offensive coordinator last year. Mm-hmm. It's good that he's not in the Eric Bieniemy offense because he would not survive that one either. That would be one where he is what they do relegated to twenty five times a game. They're running the ball, a lot of play action. Well, if he's not able to read defenses and progress, he's going to get murdered again. What Patrick Mahomes can do mm-hmm. is what the enemy and in a different way, Clint Kingsbury would want Jaden Daniels to do. Gotcha. So I know you love your boy. I love my boy, Jaden Daniels. He's fun to watch. 
And trust me, Terry McLaurin in that game yesterday was praying to the heavens that he finally has a quarterback. How is Jaden Daniels going to make this entire season playing? How is he going to make it without getting injured? I think it showed in the last game. He can sit in the pocket a little bit more. He can read defenses. I think he's getting more comfortable. And I think the O-line was talked to him and be like, hey, you get your shit together because he's already in the shotgun. You just have to block him for like an extra two, three seconds. Nah, not two, three seconds. Maybe like one and a half seconds. Let him progress through his reads and then go from there. Because when he does progress through his reads in the film I was watching, he can make pinpoint throws. He's accurate. He has a good arm. He makes good decisions. He's got zero interceptions. He doesn't have any stupid turnovers. So it's not like he's out there just slinging it for fun. And I don't mean to make this comparison because they both play for the same team. But is this not a possible RG3 situation for Jaden Daniels where it's like rookie of the year, this guy's lighting the world on fire. Could be. There's a real chance that this is like a new franchise guy because the NFL is desperate for a new quarterback group. Oh, yeah. More than just Jaden Daniels, a new group of quarterbacks to come through and really cement themselves like uh, like Phillip Rivers and the Mannings and – and Drew Brees and like all those guys, like not getting it this year. Like, but this is but this is what I'm worried about for Jaden Daniels. And you know what? I, I'll tell you this: I didn't think he had it in him. Watching that game last night, on the last play for the for the Commanders, he was going to get he got obliterated. Did he? He released that ball when McLaurin was ten yards off the line and somehow completed a fifty yard bomb for a touchdown to win the game. So just launched to, it to out. push it to push it out to basically secure their lead. Dang. And that thing exploded off of his hand. Yeah. And he stood there tall, and he threw it, and I was like, that is not who I thought you were as a quarterback. Yeah. So I'm impressed. So in the Tampa Bay game, so what I did, hopped on YouTube, eight minutes of week one and week two, I watched every play, every pass from a high view. I really did. I did my work. He's crushing tape, guys. I'm crushing tape. I love this. Game one, it would be... Right, read to the right. I don't know where. Would you say McLaren, McLaurin? McLaurin. Where does he line up? Is he always on the right, or does he line up everywhere? He goes. It everywhere. was. It was hard to tell. Yeah. But he would drop back. He would turn right because he's a righty. He would read, read, check down always. Mm-hmm. They like sixty percent of their plays were check downs to the running back or just like three yard bombs. So the first game it was like seven point seven yards per throw game one he went 17 of 24 70 percent 7.7 yards tons of checkdowns. um sorry my brain's trying to catch up did he say three yard bombs <laughs> did i <laughs> no i, thought that I don't think said. i said three yard bombs i don't think so but you know with his arm <laughs> he could, he, he he could toss three yard bombs just like i'm still trying to figure this out what is that even supposed to be i, I could toss a three yard bomb <laughs> zero throwing touchdowns no interceptions he got sacked twice um, he ran for two touchdowns that game. And then it, they ended up losing. But he was so quick through his progression. So fast forward to week two, he went 23 for 29. And 30% of those plays or 30% of those throws were 12 to 15 yards. So he was actually going through those reads and seeing things a little bit better, which was nice. Well, and And I guess for his game against the Bengals, he's got... I mean, he only had two incompletions, 254 yards, and two touchdowns, yeah. and only took two sacks. 90, so that's, still no, that's pretty impressive. Still 90, zero interceptions. Yeah, still zero, zero interceptions. Zero picks through three games. And I don't think – it says he has two fumbles, but they must have got him back because all of his plays, I don't think they gave up any – he hasn't been turned over the ball is what I'm trying to say, So which, which is good. Did he in the first two games, do you know, have more rushing yards than he had passing yards? Um, Probably I, in that first game. I can tell you right now. Just the first, but no, the he, first game he had 184 yards passing, and then rushing he had 88 yards. He ran 16 times in game one. So it's not. And the left side of that line could not hold anyone back. They were bringing so much pressure on that side, then. and yeah. then it would open up. And he's fast as hell. So all he would do is look. Check's not there. He would take off. Okay. And he was running. He was running well, but he took some hits. So I don't think those dudes know how to slide. Uh, no. No, they do not. What do you think about divisional chances for them? Dallas is a mess. The Giants are a mess. The Eagles are, like, clinging on to life, basically. So, like, can Washington, do you think they might be able to slide in there? I don't (sighs) think Dallas is dead yet. Yeah, they look you, bad, you but can't you can't count, count Dallas dead. out. God, they look dead. Yeah, though. they look it right now, but oh, you so can't count Dallas out. Super run for no Washington's reason. defense through three games is 29th in the league. 377 yards per game they're giving up. Yeah. They have 11 TDs against. 
passing defense is 31st, 255 yards a game, five touchdowns, and then rushing defense is 17th. That's yeah. that that doesn't look like divisional numbers to me. And again, <laughs> like I'm division is as bad as it's going right now. That is true. And I'm I, again, I'm new to the football and I actually like like these numbers and like analyzing this stuff, so that's more of a question for you guys. If you see 31st no you're done that's what i mean like 31st yeah. passing defense as as 17 rushing for defense either one of your offense or defense you're you should be done do you have to be are you talking top five are you talking top 10 like where where would you want to be looking back at other like let's eh, not vikings just the league in general it really depends where are on these play teams? style, I feel like. Because, yeah. like, even when, like, the Vikings are good, what do we get? Like, a mid- to upper-range defense and then, right. like, a mid-range offense. And this actually kind of relates to, like, the Bryce Bryce Young side of things a little bit. Because mm-hmm. Jimmy Johnson was talking about this this week and talking about the Panthers' decision to sit Bryce Young and play Andy Dalton. And, look, they won on Sunday against the Raiders. So, like, you, you really can't fault him for making that decision and making it that early on. But Jimmy Johnson's whole thing was – to support a rookie quarterback, you don't support them by going out and buying the greatest wide receiver, the yeah. best running back, you know, that kind of thing. You do it through offensive linemen and a great defense. You got to protect like them. The yeah. Panthers just found out that they actually did do correct. Exactly. <laughs> but the Panthers have traded away all their blue chippers on defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They invested a ton in their offensive line, which again, like okay. stats wise, like they have Andy the, Dalton now. They're their like, offensive line is pretty good. The Red Rocket. But their skill players stink. Yeah. And they never gave Bryce Young even a chance to thrive in this new offense. And and for Jaden Daniels' sake, now Dan Quinn is new coach there. Mm-hmm. So like you gotta give him a little bit of time. But Washington did that last year. They traded away Sweat and Chase Young and like they dumped oh, these yeah. pass rushers that they badly, badly need because they can't get after the quarterback. That no. was one of the things that I noticed about the Bengals. Even when the Bengals lost their right tackle during the game. Yep. Like, they're not getting that much pressure on Joe Burrow. They're not helping out. Yeah, so I mean, J- he had like 350 yards or something, just about. So here's What was the final score of that game? 38 to like 30. Okay, so it was like a little bit of shootout. Some, yeah. Something like that. But, uh, but my... Was, I have it right here. 38-33. Okay. 38-33. So, but like, here's, here's kind of my point. Jaden Daniels, I would put money on him to win Rookie of the Year. I probably should have done that. Yeah, when, when a lot of people are right now. I will. Unless Marvin yep. Harrison has six more games of <laughs> But I don't think it translates to wins. I don't think it translates to playoffs. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it more than likely translates to a lot of people getting hurt, and I think it translates more than anything else to do what Houston did last year, mm-hmm. or this last offseason, where they said – we have a generational talent at quarterback. We are going to go out and bolster our defense. Surround them with stuff that's going to help them both on both sides of the ball. Get a new running back, get yeah. a new wide receiver, whatever. Now, the problem with Houston is they didn't shore up that offensive line, as we saw in the Vikings game, and the Vikings Killed destroyed them. them. Yeah. Now, th- but but this is but this is kind of my worry for Jaden Daniels, and I'm curious as we're going through the year. Yeah what you'll kind of notice as far as trends go because i gotta be honest with you i'm not really gonna watch a lot of commanders games this year no i'm going to it's only i know you will but all by himself (laughs) like can Jaden daniels get in that upper echelon so like when we look back at this draft in like five years yeah and we're like well caleb went one uh, Jane Daniels went two, Drake May went three, JJ McCarthy, Penix, like all Bonix, like all those guys. So a bunch of ton quarterbacks. Ton of quarterbacks went early. Mo- yeah. Most ever in the first round. Yeah. But what is that going to look like in a few years? Yeah. Like, what does what that look like? Is in five your top years? people? Because like once yeah. the good people right now are out, that like as yeah. soon as Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Lamar, yeah. who knows Lamar, how long he's yeah. going to continue. It, this could be a future discussion, but just the state of the quarterback play yeah. in the NFL is so poor. Oh, it's changing. Yeah. It's changing like crazy. Brady's like, gone, Manning's gone, Breeze has gone. These guys have been gone for a while, but they were under center, reading things, doing fake calls, all that stuff. And now that's a lot of shotgun and just like, oh, I got one play in my ear, drop back, so launch it, and see what happens. Around, though. You do have Rodgers sitting around. He's going to be around until he's fifty. So, Remar- <laughs> remarkable pass he threw to Garrett Wilson for the touchdown last he week. He was like, he was slinging it. I like how he plays. You might not like him, but man, he just drops back. Oh, that defender's well, not looking. I think even if you don't like him, you still it's have to crazy. admit that he's a really good player. Let me let me finish up with a couple of these couple of these stats for uh, the Washington, then we can move on. 
Um, he did get sacked five times in the New York game. He had 226 yards on 23 to 29 passing, 79%. Yards per throw were up to 9.1. So it went from 7.7 to 9.1. So it did increase. Last night, I did look, it was at 11.2. So he was reading, he was looking a little bit, but that those 50 yard bombs help and him getting to those passes. No touchdowns in the Giants game. The kicker went seven for seven. Love that. Love that. 10 rushes for 44 yards, no touchdowns. And then Cincy, here we go. 21 to 23, 254 yards, 91%, two touchdowns, no interceptions. And he only got sacked twice. So it, it, it's going to be fun to watch. I'm I'm actually kind of excited to kind of watch a team that no one really looks at and to like actually like analyze them. And These numbers are not good for their defense at all. I haven't looked up the defense, but I do want I mean, to ask you guys this. Game, they gave up 324 yards and three touchdowns. Well, then, yeah, and then so, two rush touchdowns as well. Yep, so I saw that stat, and I want to, I want to get your guys' opinion on this before we get into Matt's um, Teams from Hell. So I have pulled up the 2024 defensive rankings through three weeks. I just want you to, what did we just talk about? The playoffs or not playoff team? I'm going to give you the top ten. I just want you to say playoffs or no playoffs. Okay. Steelers. And this is in order, 1 through 10. Oh, they're making it. <laughs> Seahawks. Yes. Yeah. Broncos. Well, no. actually, back up really quick. Okay, Seahawks. Are they still winning the division for you? Yes. I bet money on this, real money on this on Saturday. Well, now it's actually looking more promising than it did Hell before, yeah, it in my is. opinion. Hell yeah, it is. Because what do they got? They got the injured Dolphins. Or well, yes. And but then they got... But the, Ra- the, the Rams, 49ers, Rams. and Cardinals are the all, Rams is all the looking kind of uh, sad. They're all, yeah, all in disarray. Um, well, um, so we got Steelers 49ers. 1, Seahawks 2, Broncos 3. Matt, you said no no Broncos? Texans. Well, what do you think about the Broncos? The Broncos are, I don't know how they won this last game, but yeah. I don't think they'll these are do top, much more. These are top 10 defenses right now in 2024 through three weeks. Titans are at 5. No. Chargers no. at 6. No. Jets at 7. Well, the Chargers, do we know how long... Herbert's out. He has a high ankle sprain and also had a... Do you think they won't make the playoffs? No, I don't think so. High ankle sprains are like How four weeks he? for sure. Oh, so, yeah, no, probably not. At least, well, who knows? Well, they got crazy schedule? medicine in Do the NFL. Have a hard schedule? Like, so far they haven't had a hard schedule, but I don't know what the rest of it looks like. I don't know. Um, Jets at seven. Jets I, will make it. I would it. say, yeah. Bills at eight. Yeah. Bills will definitely make Bears it. Bears are tied at eight. No. No. Nope. Lions at ten. Yes. Yeah, they'll make it. Okay. Vikings are at 13. Yes. Yep. Um, What other big Shoot. ones do we have? <laughs> we just ruined the he season. Tra- he trapped us. He did that on purpose. What a rude um, guy. Now I can talk about them all yeah. I want. I just ruined their season. Chiefs are at 25. The Chiefs are Cowboys are at good. 28. Commanders I still think the Cowboys are at 29. Good. Raiders, Colts, and Rams round out the bottom. So out of that top 10, you said 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. Five of the top ten right now are gonna make the playoffs. Yeah, but like you said, Chiefs are twenty fifth. I mean they're yep. gonna make it. Like yep. their def- their defense has not always been so great. Vikings are thirteenth. Yeah. So I, I've got I got a little challenge for you. Yeah, let's go. I, I, since you're watching Washington. I I need some analysis on, analysis on Zach Ertz and the way that he plays in that offense. Because I can do that. He's I mean, he's like almost. Four, I think he might be like forty. Years he's old, old. yeah. And, and he was so clutch for them against the Bengals. It was crazy. Through three games, twelve catches, one hundred twenty-eight yards, ten point eight per game, yeah. or ten point eight per um, reception. No touchdowns right now, but yeah, he's a big target. So I, I would love a love a route tree analysis of Zach Ertz to see where he's at in the middle of the field because that yeah. was all he was doing was curls sitting in the middle. And you know what? That yeah, he's he a would, safety he, valve. He would run. He would run that line. Yep. Or he would run, find a spot in the zone, and just hang out. And I and I think that's a fascinating addition for Washington to be able to have that for Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Because Eckler got hurt in the game. I don't know how what he's going to be doing, but he's kind yep. of their safety valve. No Brown is an interesting guy at wide receiver that I think was just in a crowded Houston Texans offense. Mm-hmm. So he got cut this off season. Um, McLaurin again. The fact that he now has a quarterback instead of all of these bums, yeah. like he had Dwayne Haskins thrown to him. Like this Jeez. is how it's been for him. You know, re- rest in peace, Dwayne Haskins. But like, you know, Kyle Allen, like yeah. all these guys, and it's crazy that Kingsbury. I think they're just literally, and you can hate him or love him. They're running him like Travis Kelsey. Kelsey just literally runs straight lines, mm-hmm. and then he stops in the middle and he lets Mahomes find him. Well, he's kind mm-hmm. of been that guy. 
his whole career, I feel like. Or, well, not his whole career, but at least the last few years. He has, but I think more tight ends are starting to do that now, especially yeah. with a mobile quarterback and stuff like that. But when Jaden Daniels gets out of the pocket, and this is my last note, he can't, he's not throwing on the run. Mm-hmm. He tucks it and goes. He's yeah. not looking downfield. He's not looking to create anything off of that. So, yeah, it will be uh, – It'll be interesting over the course of the year to see how they're doing. Well, that was Washington Commander Corner yeah. with Taylor. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of hyped up. That was good. So every every year I feel like there's always a candidate for a team in the NFL, I mean all sports in general, to have a year from hell situation. And that usually revolves around injuries and ter- like just a terrible strength of schedule that they have to play. Just – Everything that could go wrong will go wrong for this team, and I, I've got I've got some candidates here that I want to go over and see see what you guys think. I, I've got a few. One that I did not put on here that I realized that I would love to entertain are the Jacksonville Jaguars because that game against Buffalo was so atrocious, and they have looked so bad this entire year. I think actually Doug Peterson might be first coach fired nominee. Well, the amount of money, all of your yeah. The oh, amount of money they so, paid that quarterback, and he's not doing yeah, absolutely I'm, I'm anything. I'm genuinely worried about Trevor Lawrence. But anyways, here, here are some I other the candidates. The have the same scenario. Like, I mean, Joe Burrow's not doing anything bad, but their team's so bad that you're paying that guy tons of money for yeah. nothing. Here are some other candidates. And again, this can only go this can only go to one team. You, there can't be multiple teams for the year from hell. So we got we got to give the Oscar to somebody here. So the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Carolina Panthers, the Chicago Bears, the New York Giants, the Denver Broncos, the Miami Dolphins, and the Cleveland Browns. So what what team stands out to you as having a year from hell potential? <laughs> potential? Oh, well, you said we have to choose one. You All gotta, of them have potential, one. clearly. Otherwise, yes. they wouldn't be on the list. But who, who's the one where it's like, you know what, that's got to be the one that's that's got the mantle. And they've got the belt right now. I'll go first here, and I'll just say the Carolina Panthers because that's who you're hearing the most about with mm-hmm. Bryce, Bryce Young. And then to sit him and then bring in the Red Rocket, Andy Dalton, and then he did what he did. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, oh, okay. But that means that they're the team from hell for the first three weeks, like – their offense might actually look better now. Yeah. However, I do agree with them. I think they're going to be trash on defense, and so they're going to struggle the whole time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think the Broncos have a game like that again in them. See, yeah, this is a Caleb tough one. Williams is absolute dirt. Mm-hmm. I think like I, he's more worried about his nails being painted, which is fine, but like <laughs> oh, he boy. he's not he's not anything special. I. You know, I feel like this has to go to the Miami Dolphins more than anybody else because of the situation that they're in. But I figured that they didn't – when you didn't put them on the list, I was thinking they were kind of out of this conversation. Because, yeah, right now they're they're screwed. That right? is that is a true <laughs> team. Yeah, that is a – uh, This is year from hell. This is the worst of the worst has happened. Yeah. Like, outside of, like – again, I'm not hoping for these things. But, like, Tyreek getting hurt, Jalen Waddle getting hurt. Like, hurt got yeah. hurt? Not hurt got hurt. Tyreek got hurt? No, I'm not saying. Oh, this, got you, got you, got you. Okay, but okay. If they potentially had Jalen Ramsey get hurt, if they do, yes, Tyreek yeah. Hill get hurt, um, like, uh, like the two situation, of those guys. just in general. Oh, yeah, just two in situations. General. Also, <laughs> how many times can this guy keep coming back from? But also, Skylar Thompson injured his chest in the game, so that was the quarterback yeah. that they were playing. They just signed Snoop Huntley, who, I, like, he was on the practice squad. I don't know how he's going to do in this offense in this upcoming week. I just feel like year from hell, yeah, shut it down. We're going to get a top five draft pick and we'll go from there kind of situation for I them. I can see that. They're going to need to draft a quarterback because honestly, Tua shouldn't be playing after because, this year, but that's right. a whole other conversation. So just like the long-term aspect of yeah, how does this team bounce back? It's the same thing for the Jacksonville Jaguars, which I think they should be up there. They have a lot of money committed to skill players. Mm-hmm. They drafted Brian Thomas Jr. in the first round when they probably didn't need to draft a wide receiver. Trevor Lawrence, oh my goodness. I don't know what I mean, to make of him as a Bring up a top good point there though too. Some of the teams that I said are doing really bad are also like kind of expecting to be in that rough area and ready to draft more players to help out. Yep. So for example like the Broncos, they still got time to figure things out. Well, Bo Nix is older than us, so I don't know about that. <laughs> well, okay, but <laughs> he's old. What the hell? <laughs> How old is he? Yeah. He's he's he went to college for like six years. Bo Nix is not older than me. Maybe you do. I'm joking. He's yeah. not older than us, but 
okay, fine. They don't have forever, but I'm just saying, like, they weren't expecting him to come in and be like, all of a sudden, now we're going to the Super Bowl. Oh, Sean Payton like, did. <laughs> oh, Sean Payton. Oh. Okay. Well, fine. The <laughs> Broncos are up there being one of the worst, I guess. But, but, but like you said, no one expected Denver, the Giants. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people hyped up the Bears, but I think... I think that was just because people are desperate for a yeah. new team. Or like the, the Dolphins, the Bengals. These are teams that you're like, expect Jaguars. You're expecting to be yeah. doing something at this point. Browns made the playoffs Didn't last year. Didn't the yeah, Jags Browns. make the conference finals last year? No. No. They, many, many years ago. Many what moons did ago. They, <laughs> did they, they made the playoffs last year, though. No. They didn't. Uh, they I thought lost, they did. Wasn't that the one where they it was? Or did they teams lose? Playing to get in, and they, they lost to they blew it. the they blew Steelers. It. Okay, that's no, what it was. They lost to the Colts. Colts. Okay. And the Steelers okay. won, and the Texans won. But like, but like a team like the Browns, they made the playoffs because they had five different quarterbacks starting for them, and Joe Flacco won Comeback Player of the Year on their team. Joe Flacco's not even on their roster right now. He's on the Colts, baby. He's on the Colts right now. Who? He might be able to get in for the Colts if Anthony Richardson continues to stink like he yeah, does. Yeah, what is going on there? <laughs> I, that's a whole other thing. That dude has not played 20 games of football in his entire life. And I'm not joking. Look it up. Okay. He never played that much in high school or college and never played very much How in the How did he NFL. get to the NFL? Raw talent, baby. Jeez. Anyways. Talk about an athlete. I'm, But that's another team, the Colts. I'm not worried about them. Yep. they got time. They can yeah. figure this out. They have a... They have a quarterback that they are trying to mold into something that I, I don't think will really work. But like, the Browns making it with Joe Flacco as a quarterback. How is that not four that like are up there? Then is Browns, Jaguars, Miami. Say Miami and who's our last one that we said? Browns, Jags, Bengals. Those Bengals, are the four that would have to be the focus. I feel like I am not worried about the Bengals because fires. they have Joe Burrow. They have Joe Burrow, and if you have Joe Burrow and you're zero and three still, <laughs> but think, but think something's about... going, and you lost to the Patriots, right? Okay. Yeah, that's the big one. They yeah. lost to the Patriots but and it, the Commanders. But remember it's a that year from hell potential where everything is going to collapse. Coach is fired. Uh, like it's they're going to clean house with the general manager. They're going to have to trade away T Higgins because he's mad. They're they're not going to be able to replace these guys. If those other teams weren't doing as bad, that yes, I would say <laughs> these guys are worse than like. The other ones that are on your list right now. Because another way to look at this is you're a fan of the team. You're a fan of the Miami Dolphins. Mm-hmm. How do you have any optimism for the future right now? You hope that Tua retires and you can bring in another quarterback and right. worry about next year. Right. Who? What quarterback are you getting? I don't know. Exactly. There is no one out there that you can steal. You can wait till Love comes back and pick up that QB. Who's playing quarterback for Malik the Packers Willis? right now? Dude. Wasting years Stop. where you have amazing Malik. wide receivers. You have huge offensive threats. They yeah. are in a win-now situation. That's what they yeah. built that team around. And, yeah, it's not going well. And we stole Sam Darnold. So we can't, mm. can't take that Sam in. Sam Darnold younger than Joe Burrow. There you go. See, Sam Darnold, set for life. That, baby. <laughs> Franchise quarterback. But I, I again, I think with the way it has all happened for Tua, that's my, sad. Miami being this greatest show on turf 2.0, South Florida version, like the, the just the hype around them is so so high. I think that defense was always going to stink, but. Like this might be like a heads rolling situation. Like Tyreek might just say, "I'm I'm good. You can send me somewhere else now." Yeah. Like I'm I out. can see that. Jalen Waddle just signed for an absolute boatload of money. Who's throwing him the ball? <laughs> like Devon Achen. Like I think he's a great running back. He scares me every time he touches the ball because he looks like he's going to explode. Their offensive line is poor. Mike they need McD- a though, lucky Brock Purdy situation. Is see, what they need. That's what it is. That's what they need. <laughs> that's what that's honestly got what they need. And guess what? I have the fix for the Dolphins Who is at it? quarterback. It's oh. Bryce it's Bryce Young. Oh, Bryce Young. Okay. I thought you were All gonna right. bring up Howell. No. <laughs> now my boy Sam Howell could sling it. <laughs> Sam Howell can sling it and Gino's looking pretty good, so I don't think he's gonna play this year. Oh my gosh. But but I think if I'm the Dolphins, I'm going to the Panthers and I'm like, look, you guys made the absolute worst trade of all time. Let's try to recoup this. They still owe a second round pick to the Bears next year. Who knows? This year, I the mean, Panthers. if you oh picked boy. him up For right now, trade. like he should be worth crap after okay. Andy Dalton this, just showed out as it's supposed to go. This is why I'm like, we'll give you two threes, third round pick this year, third round pick next year. We'll take him on our team. I think he can thrive in that offense because one, he wants to get rid of the ball fast. 
those those running those wide receivers and running backs, they just want to take it in space. Bryce Young, right? Bryce Young. Yeah, yeah. yeah He's very also short. Got those guys going on long runs to get deep ball. But they which need is not going to play for him. But too. all they need is the ball in space. So keep everything up in front, and you can just pick them apart as much as possible. Yeah. Give him some time. Give him this whole year. So Bryce Young doesn't even need to play in the system this year. Have whatever bum off the street play quarterback for them. Again, fully embrace the year from hell. Fitzpatrick's coming back. Keep, no, he's not. <laughs> keep keep your it's magic. Keep your first round pick. You know you're gonna have top five, top ten yep. draft pick. Bolster that line. Go after some free agent guys. Let Mike McDaniel work with this guy. It is. I cannot even imagine the malpractice it would be to put Tua back out on that field. Like, he can't ever come back. Like, the NFL has to step in and say, you you cannot step into the – you cannot step on the field I don't, for the Miami Dolphins. I would 100% agree with you. I don't know how he can come back. But so here, who knows? It, the NFL's got some weird stuff going on. This is my way to say salvage the year from hell. Yep. You get a young quarterback prospect. The Panthers get to recoup some draft picks. Mm-hmm. And maybe feel a little bit better about themselves because this entire group that now manages the Panthers did not draft Bryce Young, the general manager, the head coach. They were not responsible for drafting Bryce Young, yeah. despite the fact that Bryce Young was drafted last year, which is pathetic that all of them rolled like that that yeah. quickly. I just think this is the way for them to get out of the year from hell, and then it is solely on the Jackson Jacksonville Jaguars because that team might get last in their division. Dang. They look atrocious. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence. I, you know what? Maybe I'll do a little film study on Trevor Lawrence. Do it. I'm and, ready. And have a, have a couple minutes on him because watching him play against Buffalo was one of the most chaotic experiences I've ever remembered. And he reminds me of like Nick Mullins now. Where oh, it is like you're 300 gonna, yards and four interceptions. <laughs> baby, you're going to throw. Yeah. Well, like I told Sam when Darnold got hurt in that game on Sunday, uh, my wife and I were at the Texans Vikings game. And Darnold got hurt. He went out, and Nick Mullins came in, and Sam was asking me about him. I'm like, Sam, you are either going to see a 60 yard touchdown to Justin Jefferson, or you're going to see the most heinous interception of your entire or 60 life. yards the other direction. Exactly. <laughs> you're about to see. A you know what? True Nick Mullins slayer. is one of the most fun to watch. If it was not on your team, exactly. <laughs> like, that dude is it's pure entertainment chaos. all the time. It's interception, score, or touchdown <laughs> for your team. 500 yards, yeah. three touchdowns, six picks. Yep. No doubt about it. Jeez. The, again, the worst fumble you could ever imagine. Takes six sacks. Like it, it's if you pure want chaos. a game where the scoring is just off the roof, <laughs> pick up Nick Mullins. But I think I think my team from hell this year has got to be Dolphins. Dolphins. But again, yeah. if, if they can salvage it, I'm going to give it to the Jacksonville Jaguars because that is not going to turn around. All right. And they're going to have to figure out some stuff with Trevor Lawrence. And honestly, if I'm like... I think the Browns are in the same boat. They need to figure out a QB situation, too. Well, okay. But the thing is with Deshaun is... he so to <laughs> Long make them, To make them... Well, because I, I want to make sure... Besides all the suspensions I, coming his way, but... <laughs> yes. So I want to... I wanna, there needs to be context for this. Because this all might not matter if he gets suspended indefinitely from the NFL, right? So, like, then the Browns are not beholden to it that much. Mm-hmm. Dead cap-wise. Yeah. So... Deshaun took less this year and backloaded his contract. Mm -hmm. In the next two years, it's over $70 million of dead cap coming in the next two years. Deshaun Watson is not even a top 25 quarterback. He's getting 56 this year, I believe, 55 or 56. If you are the Browns, you can't cut him because your team will be in such free fall from the dead cap situation that you will not be able to be competitive for three, four years That's unless wild. you get a Brock Purdy situation. So they got to be rooting for him to to get suspended. Yeah. So basically, yeah, so honestly, if you're the Browns, you're like, God, if he gets suspended, like we, we're kind of off we're the hook free. for a bunch yeah. of stuff. Like <laughs> that is good. wild. Which, again, is insane to think about for like a franchise quarterback. They're because, not planting stuff. <laughs> because, again, so like... the, the Browns on paper, they're defense. I mean, they have Miles Garrett. Defensive player of the year last yeah. year. They, they've got a good defense. They've got a good... They have a decent offense. Their offensive line is in shambles this year. They've had a lot of injuries and turnover. But, like, with how bad Deshaun is, it's... They've just got to be killing themselves that Baker is, like, doing so doing well. Doing what he's doing, now. yeah. they just got to be killing themselves. Because they ran that dude out of town. Yeah. 
and everybody acted like it was a Baker problem, and now he's thriving in Tampa. Yeah, he's just doing his own thing now. And now the Browns, I mean, they made a deal with the devil, and now they have him. And the devil is making sure that they're going to pay every last cent. <laughs> That's crazy. What's their record? Have they won yet? They've won... Uh, yeah, they did win one, one game. One game, yeah. One game. But they got, <laughs> they got trounced. Trounced by Dallas. They looked awful against the Giants. Like they're just they're just a not serious team. No. So maybe Browns Browns are up there from team from hell potential. Yeah, but like you said, I guess they have a little bit probably potentially easier chance of recovering, and they have a defense, which is something that like yeah, the Dolphins don't, Dolphins don't if have. The that. Dolphins lose their offense; they already didn't have their defense. Right. Exactly. All in all, though, this NFL season through three weeks has been wild. Yeah, when fifty eight percent of your survival league is already out. I wasn't even going to bring that up, but yes, four people haven't used their mullets. There's four undefeated teams. Fifty eight percent of people are out. The three people talking to you this uh, this evening are also out. And my wife thinks it's smart to ask us for her our opinions when she's picking teams because right. she's still in. Don't listen to us. Don't Stupid. listen to us. We don't know anything. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm saying we're on week three. Yep. Week I'm four, gonna well, say week four is coming up. Oh, week four coming up. I'm gonna say week seven. That's when it's done. Then it's done. Yeah. Makes sense. I don't know. Those four people, they seem to be picking weird teams, so like they could right? go forever, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Jake from State Farm just won on the commanders. Before we head out, guys, any Vikings input? Matt was at the game um against the Texans. Did you like what you saw? It looks too good to be true. I was just going to say, Trev, do you have anything to say before we uh, sign off? If we can continue this way, I'm scared to get my hopes up too much. (laughs) You got a new franchise quarterback in Darnold? A franchise quarterback? Well, I mean, once you just get a rookie that's intended to be your next franchise quarterback, you have to at least give some look towards him. But yeah, he's doing great. I, I was saying, I don't remember if I said this on the podcast or not, but I have been saying that Sam Darnold never got a chance to be in a good offense before. You have so, said that, and yeah. I would 100% agree with you. He hasn't had weapons to I never throw said he's going to be as good as he's doing right now, yeah. but I figured he wasn't going to be terrible. And I do talk with some what's the, happening. I do Our talk, offensive line, though, shout out to them, has been amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I do talk with some uh, Vikings fans, and they're like, all like, they were so against the Sam Darnold thing at the beginning of the year. Oh, wow, we got JJ this, JJ that. And I'm like, okay, cool, yeah, that's fine. And then now that Sam Darn was doing all this stuff, oh, yeah, best quarterback ever. Like, oh, he's going to take us to the promised land. I'm like, <laughs> whoa, Sam, okay. Sam Darnold just needs to be Case Keenum. Oh, no. <laughs> what oh, are boy. you trying to suggest here? That's We're just going to deep just bomb everything 50-50 balls? Not throw up interceptions? Hell yeah, brother. Okay, I love the Case Keenum years. They were really fun to watch, but I don't know if we want to try that again. I- I've There's never, no way you pull it off again. I've never done mushrooms or acid, but that whole season with Case Keenum felt like that. Yeah. Where it was like, what? Everything you threw, you have like a heart attack thing, and that's gone. Wait, like, they picked the other way. Did he then... throw to the defender four times and they dropped it each time? How did that happen? We're up by 30. What or he throws right on? to the defender and we catch it for a touchdown somehow. It's yeah, like, exactly. What? <laughs> like, JJ's back, right? Yeah. He, Je- Jefferson played. Did he play all right? Yeah. Yeah. Quad looked fine. He scored the first touchdown, got me some money on my bet. Yeah. He looks good. Nice. Yeah. Sam Darnold is our god. Well, he did drop He's two good. balls. What was going on there? Don't, let's, not, let's not focus on that. <laughs> focus on the dubs. Yeah. Fo- focus on Sam Darnold was amazing. Focus <laughs> on Van Ginkle playing out of his Van mind. Ginkle's Grenard awesome. three sacks last game. I uh, forgot that. Van oh. Ginkle played with Flores defense before. Mm-hmm. It looks like he's oh. played on that defense forever. I mean, Harrison Smith making plays. Harrison yeah. Harrison Phillips making plays. We didn't even have Ivan Pace last game. Is he back next game? I, I think so. so. I hope the, so. So the squad's looking good, boys. We've got the we've squad's got looking good. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. The That's Green Bay Green Bay Packers this week, right? Huge game. Huge game. Yeah. We will uh, probably touch on that next episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. Episode 11 of the podcast. Go like, subscribe, share, comment, do all the things. Spotify, Pandora, Amazon, Audible, all that good stuff. You can also find us on YouTube. Go ahead and provide some (laughs) feedback. We really do appreciate you guys tuning in every single week. And if you want to hear something, let us know. We are out. See ya.